Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege <laughs> with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good morning. Happy Tuesday to you. I hope that you are excited about being an early adopter in this new asset class that is the digital asset space. Interesting times. Interesting times. So BTC apparently went over 59,000 again. Uh, so we're, we're just kind of looking to see if it's going to get to that 68,000 range because uh, that, that's going to be a good sign for the alts to begin to really do the big time push. So we shall see how that goes. It's a fairly green market today. That's pretty cool. Always cool when we see the green market for sure. That is pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. XRP up in that 57, 58 cent range. We added some more digital assets to the Celsius network app. Loving, get love, and are excited without question to be taking advantage of all things Celsius for sure. Good morning again to each and every one of you. Chrissy Fouts, the Fouts residence is in the building. Good to see you guys. Thomas Grant, Grand Rising Seas. Yes, indeed. Hey, Thomas. So Thomas or Thomas? Oh boy, Thomas. Good to see you, my friend. Two dub is in the building. What's good with you, bro? Luna the Alpha checked in. Good morning, guys. Do me a favor, smash that like button on the way in. So Ripple does make a big time acquisition of Tranglo. Tranglo has been in the news in terms of Ripple for a while now. Let's not forget that Tranglo also partnered with Alipay back in the day. So not too long ago as well. So we got to keep that in mind, guys. Let us not forget about that. That is uh, pretty, pretty huge. Without question. Let's see. Let me share this. Share that there. There it is. And let's share. Where is the other one? Let's share it off right here. So I hope you guys are having a good day today. We are absolutely excited about what's going on in the market. By the way, for those of you who have emailed me about our uh, uh, weight management and lifestyle line, hope you got my response emails. I did respond. Apologize for taking so long to get back to you guys. It's been absolutely crazy, massively successful. So. Uh, thanks for inquiring. We'll make sure that you guys get that info. And you got any questions, just respond back uh, in that email. That's not the one I want, is it? Which one do I want? Yes, that's the one I want. Let's see what else. That's it. I think that, oh, let me share the title. Do that. Makes a big move let me do this with P A N G L. oh there we go now thanks to people like um darren moore and uh that dude king solomon we know that trainlo is a big time um strategic partner strategic partner uh, with Ripple. Uh, so now this ODL quarter is going to light up even more in the Philippines, Singapore, and Australia, and also obviously Latin America and Africa eventually as well. So this is great because they are using the digital asset XRP. So that is really, really exciting, exciting news to hear for sure. Shout out to Jungle Inc. He did a little, he did a little video today about um, his initial reservation and uh, well, look at jungles check it in right what's good what's good with you brother good to see you right his initial reservation on the impact of what John Deaton might bring to the table right because he wasn't a securities lawyer uh, right with not that background and it was just something that always told me that um, when he did the writ of man Damus he had a, his process his thinking, was different when he did that writ of mandamus. We, we realized that he was coming from a different perspective, right? And that is just so huge to understand. And 
we, we said, you know, look, when that, when he decided to do that motion to intervene, right, on behalf of the XRP hodlers, you know, I just always thought the SEC is not going to be able to folk. Look, they already got an uphill battle in dealing with Ripple. <laughs> so taking their the gray matter, the little that they may have, and try to divide it amongst another thing was was going to be detrimental, right? And uh, uh, we have already seen the res their responses to John Deaton, whether it be the written mandamus, all the responses is getting them in more trouble. <laughs> it's getting the SEC and the team over there in more trouble. And so uh, it, it's great to see that John is having an impact. And again, you know, for Ripple, to, for Ripple to respond the way that they did in backing, if you will, quote unquote, uh, the XRP holders opportunity to intervene. When they picked up on John Deaton's thing, I knew it had significance to it. They would not have done it, like we've said. They would not have done it if it if it didn't merit, if it didn't have some weight behind it. It had to have some weight behind it for Ripple and its team, it, the behemoth mask, you know, monstrosity that is the Ripple law team. They wouldn't have responded if it didn't have some weight behind it, right? And so uh, just like Jeremy Hogan is saying and said, <laughs> Ripple's piggying back, the pigging on the back of that, the piggybacking on that without question. And it just makes perfectly good sense because I can tell you, if I said it once, I said it a thousand times, the SEC does not want the court to be hearing any kind of testimony but from individual XRP hodlers. <laughs> they don't want that. They don't want it to be a letter. They don't want it to be a, a voicemail. <laughs> a voicemail. They don't certainly don't want someone coming in person. The SEC does not want that. Because now you got a human element side to it. Now you got uh, some emotion tied to it. The SEC don't want that. <laughs> they tr they're trying to run on some facts or what they believe to be facts. They, they, they wanted to, you know, they, they wanted to be emotionless, no emotions, no heartstring pulls. No, 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 no. We don't want that. The SEC does not want that. <laughs> and that's what this motion to intervene would bring. Right. And so Ripple, Ripple said, you know what, we can, we can, we can strategize, right. We can, we can take this and run with it. Uh, to get the, the to, to get to the bigger picture, which is the current and ongoing sales of XRP, they want that secondary market to be able to move and continue the way that it has been moving, uh, and and continue with that. Right? They want that to grow. They want to continue to use the XRP escrow, and this is they they leverage what John Deaton did. They leveraged it. It's smart. It's very 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 smart. Again, John Deaton's coming from a different angle. He wants the, the judge to hear from us, right? He wants the judge to, to, to hear that we never thought we were a part of some investment contract, right? That's what John Deaton wants. And um, Ripple said, well, you know, they recognize that the SEC is trying to be very broad and very general. general. And the, if, if you read that letter that Ripple did and his attorneys put together to the Honorable Annalisa Torres, it's powerful. I mean, it's powerful. She's reading it, and then they and then they reference what uh, the Honorable Judge Netburn said. They reference that as well. Not that not that Torres doesn't know already. She knows. They talk, right? Jeremy Hogan advises. They talk. They they kind of um they kind of work together in tandem. Yeah, I really do believe we're going to get that again. That summary judgment uh, that we're so accustomed with in our business in, in these long. Um, what is it? And these long um, suits, they can take a long time, but there's these summary judgments, right? And every time you get a win, it, it just kind of amplifies um, your chance of winning it all. And I believe we're going to get this win. Now, when are we going to get the win is another thing, right? Because look, the SEC will have to make up their mind. They're going to have to make up their mind. Are, are we doing, are we are we 
try in this case based upon Ripple and what Ripple did with XRP? Or were you trying it on the whole X, the whole digital asset space around XRP or the ecosystem, if you will, around XRP? Are you trying to say that I'm selling, if I sell it, I'm selling the security? Are you trying to say if the exchange sells it, they're selling the security? They have to make a decision. They have been backed into a corner and they will have to make a decision. And trust me, they don't, if, if the only other option to them making a decision is to let testimonials written or verbal into the court from XRP hotlers, they are going to choose to make a decision. No, 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 no. We're not talking about the secondary market and exchanges, and right? We're talking about Ripple and Brad and Chris. They're going to have to make that decision. They do not want to hear or hear the judge here. I thought that the SEC was looking out for us, the individual investor, and they let this thing drag on from 2013 to 2020. They do not want that being said. This crypto seed getting a protein shake on. <laughs> right? They do not want that tape. Trust me, guys. They don't want it. <laughs> they do not want it. So, yeah, this huge acquisition 40% um, purchase into uh, Tranglo is huge. And again, we can't forget the Alley, I think it's Alley Pay and Tranglo partnership. I believe it's Alley Pay. So that is massive in a lot of ways. And, and remember, Tranglo is in the business of using ODL, which means they're using XRP. So uh, absolutely massive, massive news. What's going on, Jungle? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Gokhan Istanbul checked in. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, the mic shop. Yeah. Good morning, Siege and fam. What's going on, Trevor Conte? I'm going to share something that you share with me this morning, brother. Good to see you. PayPal's getting in further in the crypto. It's just a matter of time. It really, really is. It's just a matter of time. Man, I can't wait for Bitcoin Cash and Daz and Zcash to start doing their thing. I'm excited for that. We shall soon see. Joe C is in the building. What's going on, Joe C? LOL C, soon we'll all be part of the new 1%. 1%. Indeed, we will. Brian HK says, Tranglo is here in Malaysia. Yep. Yep. Remember the whole move from the west to the east thing? I forgot to show you guys that. I'm going to share that again because I'm telling you it's making more and more sense that it's going to start in Asia. Between, uh, between SBI and Mr. Yoshikaka Katao and what they're doing. I'm telling you. What's going on, DSGR10? Good to see you. M. Ant M. Ant is in the building. What's good with you, my friend? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I don't know about buying it through the app, but you can, you can deposit M. Ant. Crypto Siege, hey, Siege, question here. Was XRP excluded from the Celsius app while the SEC is going on? No, it was not. So the things that you could normally do or previously do or normally do with XRP on Celsius, you can still do those things. I've never tried to buy XRP on the Celsius app. Dan, Rob, Ripper don't care about us. They just want to win. This is just an, uh, an alley by coincidence. Remember that, folks. Well, absolutely, they want to win, but they, they may not care about you or I, but they care about what XRP is, right? They care how XRP is designated, right? That's the most important thing, that they care about what happens with XRP, right? Dubian 2 checked in. Hey, see, who's up with you, my friend? Prince Chuko is in the building to smash the like. I appreciate that, guys. If you didn't get a chance to smash it on the way in, no worries. Just collapse the chat and go smash that like button. So important that we get the word out that the digital asset space is available to the average Joe and Jane. And it is, in fact, their greatest chance to win, right? The, the, the ability to participate and acquire assets and invest in protocols on a level playing field doesn't exist 
everywhere else. Barely does it. Majestic is here. How are you, Majestic? Good to see you. Check in Jungle Inc. Gregson Wong is here. Good morning, Steve. It's nice to catch you early indeed. Good to see you, Gregson. Luna the Alpha Wolf. <laughs> I love that. Good morning. Do you own some Luna? The digital asset Luna? Working until I die. Checked in. Good morning to you, my friend. Jay Corn is in the building. Good to see you. Crypto underscore JS is doing all kinds of great stuff on the Celsius network. Proud of you, bro. Keep doing you. Keep doing you without question. So, guys, let's look at this. XRP Precision Beach, how are you, my friend? Let's look at this thing here from Ripple. I think it's, you know, in, in the midst of a lot of things going on, right? They continue. <laughs> they continue to do their thing. You got to give uh, Ripple and, and the guys over Ripple um, major props. Let's see here. Ron Chain. What's going on? Ron Chain. Ron Chain and XRP is interesting stuff there. We'll go over that as well. Ripple firm, Ripple, there it is here from Trevor Laconte shared it with this uh, with me as well. In case you're wondering about today's Ripple XRP announcement, here it is on Bloomberg. Crypto firm Ripple to take 40% stake in Asia payments specialist. But I, I saw a Sheesh Burling and Brad Garlinghouse tweeted this. There it is here. A Sheesh Burling said, fresh off the press to start the week. Ripple is acquiring a 40% stake in cross-border payments hub, Tranglo, to expand ODL liquidity in the Philippines, plus new quarters starting in Southeast Asia. And I guess these are some of the people heading those areas there. So this is Brooke Sentwinstel and uh, Amari Sarhangji as well, which is really, really cool. And we'll go over that. And here is the, and then Brad, responded to the tweet and said, thrilled to finally announce this one. Combining Tranglo's APAC footprint with RippleNet will create an even better experience for customers who can take advantage of both ODL and the line of credit. Here it is right here on Ripple Insights. Ripple requires 40% stake in Asia's leading cross border payment specialist, Tranglo. Tranglo actually put something out as well on Twitter, by the way. Ripple has agreed to acquire 40% of the Asia's lead, of Asia's leading cross-border payment specialist, Tranglo. This partnership enables Ripple to meet growing custom demand in the region and expand the reach of RippleNet's on-demand liquidity service, which uses the digital asset XRP to instantly send money and reduce working capital needs. And if any of you guys know, uh, uh, I have a link for the Ripple for the uh, Alipay and Trango partnerships. I think it was Alipay, not Alibaba, but if you guys have that, please put that in the chat. That would be awesome. As a pioneer for cross-border payments, Trango will play a critical role in supporting existing quarters, such as the Philippines, and introducing new ODL quarters within its current network. As Ripple broadens its ODL footprint in the region, RippleNet customers using ODL will also be able to to leverage Ripple's line of credit, which is going to be massive, to free up working capital and scale cross-border payments into new, into more markets than ever before. That line of credit there, again, is about, um, you know, kind of loaning, if you will, that XRP to enterprises so that they can do more things in the business in terms of cross-border payments. Um, and that takes, essentially takes XRP off the market, right? Supply and demand thing gets triggered. Tranglo will continue to provide and expand its current payment services to make cross-border transactions faster, cheaper, and more secure for its payments. And so uh, they talk about some of the people here. Ripple's investment in Tranglo is a reflection of the company's deep commitment to enriching the payments ecosystem in Southeast Asia, the fastest growing region for RippleNet adoption. Last week, the company announced Brooks it, and Twistle as managing director of the Southeast Asia to lead and scale its uh, SEA operations. And then here, Triangle has uh, always provided itself on making cross-border transactions faster and cheaper 
By partnering closely with Ripple and ODL to new markets, we aim to further that ambition to provide accessible and equitable financial services to the masses, explains Jackie Lee, who's the CEO at Tranglo. So again, making ODL, expanding those ODL corridors is going to be the game changer. It's always going to be about utility and liquidity. And uh, this market, again, I think is going to be the major, major, major market. Uh, I think it all starts in Asia. Uh, for what we like, would like to see in terms of um, more people using it, I think it starts there. Yeah, Dan, Rob, I heard about that. Rumor is Coinbase may be facing bankruptcy. I heard about that. How is that possible? Klaus Klaus is in the building. How are you, my friend? Uh, please, everyone, like this video. This man's doing this like every day for us. Please like the button. There you go, Klaus. Appreciate that, my friend. Who else checked in? Anz X. I don't know anything. Hello, uh, uh, Ali Raza Saeed. Or Syed. Is Coin Switch uh, Wallet safe? I don't know anything about the Coin Switch Wallet. Any of you guys know about that? For shot, Ruhani is in the building. What's going on with you, my friend? Charlie G checked in. Good to see you. Hello, XRP Magnificent. Good to see you, my friend. I don't know. Uh, Brian HK, what's the deal with this XDC and R3 announcement? Don't know. Uh, I, I know the XDC and R3, you know, they're they're doing their thing. We'll see how it goes. You know, apparently R3 likes the idea of this hybrid blockchain, and that's cool. It's just this is a trillions and trillions of dollars space. Trillions and trillions of dollars. Right, there's plenty to be had by good working projects, right? That solve solutions. So if, if R3 done something with does something with XDC, cool. I do know that Mr. Yoshitaki Tao will have a little something something to say about it, right? <laughs> and and he is without question the biggest XRP fan out there, right? So let's check out the markets and see what's going on there. Did I miss anybody checking in? Martin 958, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Eric Jenkins is here. Good to see you as well. Hey, Michelle, love your live stream. Well, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Good to see you. So let's go over this, the numbers here in the market real quick, see what's going on. Bitcoin is at 58,000, currently at $58,905. It, it did go over 59,000 for a bit. Ethereum's at $1,838. Uh, Binance coin, goodness gracious, is $301. Cardano is at $1.22. Miss Crypto Seeds will be happy about that. Polkadot's at $34.45. XRP currently is at $0.57. Cents. And uh, uh, Crypto.com's coin is at $0.22. Cents, number eight. Number eight. Uh, Uniswap's at $28.81. Litecoin's $199. Theta token, $13. Chainlink's at $28. Bitcoin Cash is at $533. Wow, these numbers have changed. Doge is at $0.05. Cents. VeChain is just under $0.09. Cents, 0 0.89. So very, very cool there. So the market, you know, it's got some green and some uh, are not so green. So we're still kind of doing the sideways thing. Shout out to those who hold algos, a dollar and 33 cent. And Miss, Miss Crypto Seas is really happy about the fact that she has some mana as well. This is Hadera Hashgraph. Hadera Hashgraph is at 40 cents. Mana is at a dollar and 11 cents. Interesting time for the market. Again, most people are excited about the alt season and the bull market. I cannot wait for the bear market. I really cannot wait. It's going to be very, very interesting. We got this going on here. It's going to be very, very interesting uh, to say the least. Gamer for Life checked in. What's good with you, my friend? Good to see you. XR, XR Free Me <laughs> is here. What's going on, my friend? Hello, Season XRP family. 
driving and mentally rising with the seeds, right? Appreciate you being here, my friends. Stay safe, man. Be safe on those roads. Crypto underscore JS has a, um, says, I've used CoinSwitch a few times for swaps with zero issues, but not sure about a wallet option. There you go. Phil56 is here. What's going on, Phil? Texas crypto. <laughs> I made a thousand in the start market. Uh, I need to buy some more VeChain now. I hear you, bro. Congrats on making that 1K. Yeah, that's a, that's a, 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 yeah, it's very confusing to me, Jungle, what's going on with Coinbase and this rumor. I don't know what it is about this possible bankruptcy. You know, why wouldn't Coinbase IPO and raise more cash then? Why do a SPAC? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Peter Brandt said it today in a tweet. Peter Brandt talked about Coinbase? Oh, really? Facing bankruptcy, that's interesting to me. It really, really is. Let me see what else did I want to share with you guys here on Twitter. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Wan Chain, and, and, and I get now they got this kind of three-way bridge thing going on for DeFi. I mean, and I think that's cool. I mean, I do think that's cool. CZ is tweeting. <laughs> Let me share this. CZ is tweeting about John Clayton on the live stream. <laughs> uh, why is CZ tweeting about that? It's interesting. Ripple buys Coinbase XRP ammonia. Wow, it's interesting. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to share this. He said, because they don't answer customer calls, bad customer service is just the new way. Coinbase, Robinhood, et cetera, good luck getting your person on the phone. Oh, yeah, I know. Coinbase, I, I say it all the time. I don't tweet much, but when I do tweet, I do tweet Coinbase blows. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's awful. It's really, really, really uh, awful for sure. Guys, we got over 100 people here, 50 something likes. If we can get to over 100 likes, that would be awesome. Uh, what do I want to do here? I want to share my screen and share something here with you guys. Here, first of all, you got CZ Binance saying, cool. <laughs> The former SEC chairman Jay Clayton joins crypto advisory board and Jay-Z, Jay-Z, CZ Binance tweeted, cool. <laughs> what do you think about that? You, you know, he's making fun there. You know, he's, right? <laughs> you don't want to say too much about that. Uh, cool is an interesting tweet. Uh, to say the least. So what is going on with Wan Chain? I don't know what they're trying to accomplish here. Uh, the PayPal news is pretty massive. Shout out to Pintoshi. PayPal official integrations for payments using BTC, Bitcoin Cash, LOL, and Litecoin to begin today. Venmo at some point is also scheduled to add Litecoin. Pretty massive. John Deaton tweeted about this as well. And it's not pretty massive, it's just massive. Where's John Deaton's tweet on this? Here it is right here. So Coindesk put this out. PayPal is set to announce later Tuesday it has started letting its US consumers use their crypto holdings to pay at millions of its online merchants around the world, according to a report. For those of us that have been in crypto for the last few years, this may not appear to be huge news because we know people like James Rule have been using their crypto to fund everyday purchases at Walmart, Target, Amazon, et cetera, using the Uphold card. But this is huge news. PayPal is set to announce later Tuesday, it has started, uh, right? But he said this, but this is huge news, right? 
and PayPal and their customers going that next step for them, right, um, is huge. Because I think there was initial, like, you could buy stuff, you could buy the Bitcoin or whatever there, but you couldn't take it out. So them moving forward with crypto, taking another step forward for the consumers is obviously massive. And PayPal is into crypto. Make no mistake about it. They're, they are into crypto. They back some major projects. Like one of their major projects that they back is RSR, Reserve Protocol. RippleX tweeted this out about Chain, and, and, and it's pretty cool, right? Now live, cross-chain bridges between Chain, Ethereum's Rinkabee, and XRPL testnets. Wancha says, dear XRP, meet DeFi, De dear DeFi, <laughs> meet XRP. We're sure you two will really hit it off. And so I, I, it's cool. Look, um, there, uh, you know, there are moves, right? There are smart moves. Um, like Jungle was saying earlier today in his video, there's nothing like there, there isn't um, an army like the XRP army, right? And so Wan Chain understands that, right? So, uh, so it's a smart move for sure to bring together uh, the armies, right? To bring together the uh, the uh, the audience, bring together the, uh, the 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 different platforms together as well, right? And so, you know, it's it's not just the brilliance in the XRP ledger uh, that is massive. Uh, right, but you got to have people wanting it and using it and promoting it. And so it's a smart move without question <laughs> on the part of Juan Chain. And the Cryptic Poet shared this with us too. Justin, Hugh Buck teams up with Ripple partner Currency Cloud. Share this. The next generation banking as a service platform. Uh, Hugh Buck has partnered with FinTech Currency Cloud to support the, the, the Hugh Buck's business customers with seamless cross-border payments, employee to employer payments, access to a digital multi-currency account, and real-time wholesale foreign exchange rates. Hugh Buck is an embedded financial services provider that offers multiple payment cap cap uh, capabilities from a single platform. Currency Cloud, again, Ripple partner. Currency Cloud announces partnership with Ripple to process cross-border payments on Ripple Net. So again, you know, bring them into the fold, get them on the initial thing. It may be fiat to fiat, but when it gets time to do something, uh, then they have an opportunity to use a digital asset, XRP. They have that option to do so. And uh, I got to tell you, I firmly believe once we get that word, and I do think that uh, the SEC is going to uh, make a decision not to have anything to do <laughs> with the extra P hotless motion to intervene, and they are going to come to a conclusion. I really do believe that some type of settlement uh, to make that happen. I really do believe that is clear. So look, this is the latest news. I, uh, the SEC is filing a suit. Here it is, another one. This is right. Yeah, it's not good. And this is just to start, right? In, in library, I get it. Certainly not the, the, the behemoth that is uh, Ripple, but they are going after FinTech. They are going after the digital asset space. They want to be in control of this space and they think they can do so by, you know, doing these things and getting uh, some stuff passed or um, getting some fines and some disgorgement and that type of stuff. So Jeremy Hogan tweeted this out. And he's the reason why he did, right? Just today, the SEC filed another lawsuit against a cryptocurrency company, LBRY Inc. and the LBC token. And I believe that to be like, um, uh, uh, you know, another platform like YouTube, uh, obviously with, uh, you know, more of a friendlier view in terms of what you can put on there and not having it be regulated like YouTube does. Ripple wasn't the first and won't be the last. The whole industry is at risk. Ripple won't be the first and won't be the last. Wasn't the first and won't be the last. The whole industry is at risk 
and Crypto Eddie tweeted out, what's going on, Crypto Eddie? Good to see you. Good to uh, see you. Appreciate everything that you do for the community, my friend. Please don't let your tweets go to waste. Please remember to include members of Congress with this issue so they are fully aware that this work is needed now. A, the U.S. must continue to lead by embracing technology and innovation, and B, no more SEC overreach at Warren Davidson. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool, right? Pretty cool that she's doing that. And it's right. And, and Hogan is from saying it's Jesse Hines has really been screaming us from the rooftops, attorney Jesse Hines, and that, you know, we need to turn our energy and focus in our tweets and our letters to Congress, to our prospective Congress people, and let them know um, how we feel about the SEC's overreach. And it's not new to governments, the FTC is infamous for doing the very same thing in our industry that we operate as a business on this massive overreach. And we took a lawsuit actually to them. It's currently in motion, in trial, um, as we speak about the FTC's, if you will, overreach. And so it's a real thing. And um, and they're right. You got you to gotta get to the Congress people. Um, uh, to get some changes done. And I think they're well aware of it. We all know about this new working group that they're looking to put together <laughs> with the SEC and the CFTC uh, and that type of thing. Uh, we'll see how it comes, uh, how it comes about, if it'll make some change. But, you know, I know we're concerned right now because we're, we as XRP hotlers are in the middle of something right now. And the working group's gonna take a while um, to get established and get kind of put together and, and come up with some answers. Uh, but it is in motion, guys. We're almost there for shy. Thank you so much for this, for the super sticker and supporting the channel, brother. I appreciate that. Appreciate you being here as always. So that's where we are, guys. Look, a very, very interesting time. Very, very interesting. Let me file, let me, let me file, file. Let me find this chart here because I believe this is so true. Now I have to hope to find, let me see if it's documents, um, that tweet. Well, no results. Um, is it here? Uh, let's see. There, there it is there. Is that the one? Yeah, that one will work. Hopefully it'll share. But let me first see if I can find this tweet for you guys. Billy Bob's in the building. What's going on? South, shout out from South Detroit. What's good with you, Billy Bob? I used to hang out in a little small town um, in, in Detroit. Uh, goodness gracious, what's the name of that now? I can't remember. Let me see if I can find something because I guys, I got to tell you this west to east thing starting in Asia, all of that stuff. I believe it leads to this uh, diagram that I'm going to share with you guys. I really, really do. It may be a little bit on the conspiracy front, maybe a little bit for, you know, tinfoil type ish. But I do think it's important. Let me see if I can find it. I forget who put it out there, but it's really, really good. Uh, is this it? Not one. Uh, hold on a second, guys. I know I have it, but maybe I don't. But pay attention to this here. Oh, so who tweeted? Someone tweeted out about um, the movie, The China Hustle, right? Who tweeted out about The China Hustle? Told me to go check it out on Netflix. I don't have it here, but let me share this with you guys. The China Hustle. Anybody watch that yet? I'm, I may do that. I gotta. I gotta hit the gym. 
but I may do that. Let me see if I can share this. I, you know, I just, you know, I still believe that this is one of those things that is going to really, really prove out. I really, really do. I really, really do. Now, we'll see how it all goes. It says behind the curtains, what's happening right now. And I remember I, this was back in the day when Trump was still in office and all that stuff like that, right? Um, Mr. Trump and Z and Putin are ready to push the plan faster. The plan rolls out, the better. Nobody will control the new financial system. Swift system soon to be replaced. They won't be there for long before 2020 or by 2020. Well, that didn't happen. Change of structure will absolutely occur. Digital credit, trusted liquidity will soon be injected. Digital credit will soon be injected, which will be XRP. Digital credit, interesting. So here it's got Swift with an arrow pointing to the AIIB. It's the Bank of China, I believe it is, HSBC. All right, so here's the thing that I think is really important. Transfer of system from the West to the East, AAIB, use of the CIPS, beginning of the quantum financial system. Again, a little on the, uh, the tinfoil there. This gold-based XRP thing as real-time settlement, a little on the tinfoil. But this West to East thing, again, I think is gonna be huge. HSBC plays a key role here in transfer of system of old to new. Liquidities are still flowing at the moment left to right. I still think we're gonna have to pay close attention, keep our eyes out on AA, AIIB and HSBC. And someone tweeted that <clears throat> about this plan with China. Um, and again, I've, I've, I've been turned on to the China, the CNY and XRP transactions for a while. And uh, a good friend in the chat has always said, pay attention to the transactions going on there with CNY and XRP, don't sleep on it. The numbers are there. They prove themselves out. We have to pay close, close attention uh, to that. And we'll see how it's gonna all unfold We'll see how it all unfolds, but pay attention to that, guys, because I, I do think that that chart is going to have some major relevance. And HSBC, I, I want to say that it's it, it's in the mix of a lot of different things. And we still have that announcement of Bank of America, right, yet to come. We still have that. It's still there. They haven't made it yet. The logic sphere said, I just transferred some XRP to Wan Chain. Okay, nice. Good to see you, my friend. Golkan Istanbul. Everybody thought with when Gary Kens to come into the SEC, everything changed, but it is wrong. I don't trust him. I hear you. I hear you. What's going on, XRP Joe? Good to see you. RC, hey, hollow chain appears to be, hey, C's, hollow chain appears to be in price discovery mode. Yeah. I was wondering which HOT they were talking about, if they were talking about hollow chain or if they were talking about um, hydro protocol. Coasting West says, just started watching your videos, man. And I have to say, it's very refreshing to see you actually go over news and information without being full of clickbait. <laughs> well, good. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying that, Coasting West. I appreciate you being here. Hey, you checked in. Wasn't it you? I think it was you. What did you tweet recently about, um, hey, Jer? No, you were talking about something else. You were talking about, um, uh, what was it? Oh, the dollar and um, because we we had that generational wealth Wednesday, right? And you were talking about the purchasing power, right? And I think you said something about well, a million in USDB have more purchasing power than a million in in, in regular dollars, and no, right? So, right, the difference between the regular dollar and USDC, right, is that you can earn ten percent on USDC, like today like an average Joe or Jane. And you can't do that 
in a traditional market without massive, massive risk. Right. And that's really the difference. And so when I put a thousand dollars in USD into my bank and I put a thousand dollars of USDC or USD tether or US or any of the stable coins on Celsius, a year later, I'm going to have more USDC than I would regular US dollar, if that makes sense, right? Pedro, Sarah, hey Pedro, what's up with you, my friend? Where are you checking it from, Pedro? What's up from the North? Love the live stream. Thank you, Ramrod, and I appreciate you being here, my friend. Jungle Inc., you got a few million, so you held on to your hollow, huh? See, and again, that was one of the mistakes that I made. I got rid of, I had a few million hollow as well, got rid of all of them. Not bad, Jungle. I'm happy for you, my friend. You got a few million right now <laughs> in a good place. And again, a lesson learned, again, which is why I'm excited about the bear market, but it's just kind of a lesson learned. It's just right, hodl, you know, acquire and hodl. If there, if if it's a working progress uh, project, looking to make a dent in the universe, right? Looking to make some moves. Eventually, its value will show in the marketplace. Eventually, if it is, and if it isn't, it'll just go away. But obviously, when you're in a position to get a few million of something, right? You're able to get that at at dirt rock bottom prices, right? But the lesson is acquiring a project after you do your homework and you do your due diligence and you say to yourself, if I feel like this has a place in the marketplace that it, it, it can grab market share, that it, it has a lane that it can operate in. After you do your homework, then you can asymmetric bet 200, 400, 500 at rock bottom prices and, and have a few million, a few million. And when the market does what the market does and time will have some value. So let's look at hollow chain. Hollow, they're calling it the hollow token, right? I mean, it's at one cent now. It's up 49% <laughs> on the year. That's not bad. That is not bad. 49% on the year in the last 90 days at 28%. And again, lesson learned, lesson learned. For sure, because I remember I was looking into hollow big time and I got some, got a bunch of it. And over the course of, you know, three plus years or whatever, you make moves and they turn out to be just wrong moves. And it feels like the move simply is, right, Jungle? The move is simply doing your homework and doing your due diligence and feeling like that it, it has a project that could do some things and make some moves, right? I remember the, the days of the hollow port and people were ordering them. There was a waiting list to get them and all of that, right? That's why I can't wait, Jungle, for the for the bear market. <laughs> Just can't wait for it because of so many great lessons learned that it can be applied in the next bear market. John Love is in the building. How are you? <laughs> oh, you, so Jungle, you don't hold any more hollow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 49X, not, that's not bad. <laughs> 49X, that's not too bad, right, bro? That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. And unfortunately for me, I put my hollow into BCT, BTC, right? Uh, you know. And then BTC, and I was doing that whole trading back and forth for BTC and XRP. Yeah, <laughs> Chung was like, yeah, the ports and Binance throwing US investors off, I bounced. I hear you, my friend. I hear you. So there it is there, Pedro. Check probity and, and the RA, and it's the same you were saying about a stable on stasis, in my opinion. You will have more value in flare and probity and RA, but I'm a maxi flare networks and flare night finance. I hear you, Pedro. I'm looking to see. <clears throat> I'm excited about seeing what they're going to roll out, seeing what probity, the probity vault is going to, um, what it's going to look like and, what, and how it's going to roll it out. And also, 
what's going to be going on with the RA stable coin. We'll have to see. Right. And, uh, you know, like Tika says, let the game come to you. These platforms are going to have to prove, prove themselves out before I put any kind of major amount of my crypto on them. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll do a little something, something with um, Flare Network. Right. But Flare Finance is going to have to prove itself out for me. And so will um, the probity vault in RA. Right. So there it is. Oh, yeah. And you're right, Hayes. Your crypto stable coins are small capped enough to become more stable than the counterparty fiat pairs. I wonder even if at some point stable coins need to be revalued as fiat and fiat declines one, you know, 1.15 to one or something like that. It's going to be interesting to see because the stable coin market, I'm telling you, is massive. Celsius cannot pay out 10 percent, 10 and a half percent to 12 and a half percent unless there's a big time demand from institutions, hedge funds and, and exchanges. That's, that's the primary marketplace, right? And so these institutions are paying big time money for these staple coins, right? So that's a big time thing there. So I'm gonna go check out um, the China hustle. Someone recommended checking that out to really, um, to really, really get, oh, it's XRP Mammy, that's who it was. It was XRP Mammy on Twitter said to really check into what's going on with China. And it was all, this was all in relation to <clears throat> um, Clayton and the SEC and all of that stuff going on and giving the blessings to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I can't wait to watch this documentary and see what's going on. XRP Joe, anybody know the validity of upcoming release of ShibiSwap? Never heard of it. Never heard of Shibi Swap. Shibi Shaba, Shiba. Never heard of it. What's going, Aiden Jameson? Good to see you. Ah, we don't. We don't allow that stuff, though. So there it is, guys. There's the news. The China hustle. I heard it's a good documentary on kind of the bigger picture of what's really going on. <laughs> I'm going to check it out for sure and see what's up. Uh, again, don't sleep on the CNY and XRP trading pairs. What's going on there? It's big time volume. What is going on with that? We'll have to look at that and see. Stark Origin says, hi, Crypto Seas. Kim.com made a tweet about Bitcoin Cash and Elon Musk agreed with Kim.com. So Elon Musk must have an eye on Bitcoin Cash. So better to start accumulating Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, and, and I agree with that as well, Stark Origin. I don't know why um, the whole Bitcoin Cash thing. I do know that Roger Ver made a very, very... Great demonstration video on the difference between using, between using Bitcoin for transactions peer to peer and Bitcoin Cash, and it was it was a significant and very impactful demo in terms of the cost associated with transacting peer to peer with Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash. It was very dramatic. It was very impactful, and. Um, who was that? BC Backer made a very, very good point. You know, there's always seems to come um, during bull markets, there seems to come this narrative of the better Bitcoin or the better Ethereum. Uh, and I think Bitcoin Cash might get that. I don't know. Um, but I do know currently, for me, we've been investing in Bitcoin Cash and EOS and Dash and Zcash and um, Ethereum Classic once we realized, you know, the better return on investment from previous prices to all time highs. I mean, we were talking uh, 6X to, to 15X in those five, just to all time highs, just to all time highs. So, and we've been doing just, you know, little thousand, 
um, entries, little $2,000 entries, just small entries um, in those five and just splitting them up, you know, because when you look at the, the one year, um, let's look at a one year, for example, on uh, BCH. Hollow train was at hollow train was at 49,000%, right? One year. And Bitcoin Cash is at 144%. Right? So one has happened and one, well, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> right? It's currently 8x away. We've been investing when this was uh, 9, almost 10x away. It was like 9 point something x away from its all-time high. All-time high is 43.55. But again, you know, like BC Backer says, you, you, you see BC8, you see Bitcoin Cash. Anytime some platform announces something, BC Bitcoin Cash is in there with, with uh, Bitcoin. And XRP used to be there as well until this happened, right? But it's always Bitcoin Cash in something. Right. Yeah. So Matt Jacobs says, I have seen one chain is going to be implemented in the China state grid. Biggest utility company in the world. Right. And stock origin. Oh, Matt Roberts says announced today that they. That they one chain will partner with the S. GCC, really? Okay. But Stock Origin, you're right. Uh, crypto sees Bitcoin Cash on chain transaction fees are under one cent. And it's the only Bitcoin fork that is on BitPay. So again, uh, it's still a proof of work thing though, right? In terms of mining. What, what what would happen if, since there's someone to reach at Bitcoin Cash, I just want you to think about this, think for a second. Since there is someone to reach at Bitcoin Cash, what would you think if all of a sudden you hear that they do something very, very similar to what Ripple did with XRPL and putting it in that um, um having that zero carbon emissions goal and, and working with energy web. Wouldn't that be really interesting? Because you would have a very, very popular Bitcoin blockchain, right? That's not going to have that POW issues of energy. And, and again, there's someone to go to to make that happen, right? There's someone to look into working with energy web and doing something there. I would I wouldn't be surprised if you hear something like that coming out of the Bitcoin cash camp. I I really wouldn't. And if they got transactions that there are less than a penny going on. <laughs> I, Right. And uh, a lot of people didn't think Bitcoin Cash was going to get, you know, I remember when the fork happened. I remember when the discussion and the split and the disagreements with Roger. And I remember all of that. I remember all of that. And man, no one thought it was going to survive. And it hit four thousand dollars as an all time high. Four thousand three hundred and fifty five dollars. And I, again, I would not be surprised to hear something like that. They made a move and they, they, they followed uh, and did what Ripple was doing and, and hopped on Energy Web and that gets promoted. And now that's in the news. And, and, and then all of a sudden some, you know, you, right now, um, Mr. Wonderful and some others are really on this push that the only quote unquote Bitcoin they want is this kind of green thing. Right, that's not coming from China and not whatever, whatever. What if Bitcoin Cash becomes that? Some food for thought. Right? 
just some food for thought. It's hard to say, but people, you know, I could see something like that happening. But right now, just from a numbers perspective, Bitcoin Cash on the year is 144% up. Hollow Chain is 49,000% up. <laughs> so which one would make sense in terms of return and investment? For me, cheers, Pedro. Appreciate you checking in, brother. For me, it's, it hasn't run yet. Bitcoin Cash hasn't done its thing yet, right? And we all, we, we all kind of tend to agree that, you know, the, especially the bigger ones, they're going to get to their all-time highs and beyond. So the Bitcoin Cash, the XRPs, right, the, uh, the Ethereums, right, they're all going to kind of get to their all-time highs and beyond. And if you got something that is still seven, eight, nine, and even further X, greater X away from the all-time highs, those seem to be the kind of better returns uh, on the money, if you will. And shout out to those who have hollow and held on it to it. You're doing pretty good, right? Just like um, the central land, right? Just like the central land as well. So there it is, guys. Just some food for thought. I hope it, I hope it added some value to you. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day for sure. Never, ever forget that old money does not want you to win. Old money does not want you to win, but that's okay though, because you are already winning. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya.